Go ahead. Like we're live. I'm here today. Uh, this is Wes Christian. I'm here today with David Winger. David Winger is the CEO and, and the chief officer at Share Intel. Uh, I've had the privilege of knowing David for approximately the last 15 or 16 years and uh, consider his company to be the company to go to regarding determining for a public company uh, what shares they actually have out in the marketplace that are real and what shares they have out in the marketplace that, that really aren't real. There are phantom shares, fake shares, synthetic shares, counterfeit shares. They're called numerous things, but they no doubt are shares that were not issued and authorized by the corporation. So David, welcome to our little uh, question and answer session. And uh, where are you Where are you today? Well, I'm, I'm sitting right here in my home office. Um, wanted some quiet time here. My, my office is pretty busy these days, as you might well imagine. So I, I, I decided to record this at home. My primary yeah, I office is right today that no, I noticed today in the uh, European Union that they're going to require a mandatory buy-in starting February 2022. Did you see that? Well, wouldn't that be wonderful? And and uh, you know there was a I think there was a a um, something on the Twitter feed from Charlie Gasparino today as well that, that talks about our current SEC chairman uh, forcing all of this trading back onto the exchanges. And wouldn't that be a wonderful thing because we'd be uniquely Suited to be capturing all of that data at Share Intel. Yeah, you and I both know that a lot of the illegal trading that you and I worked on for decades uh, it happens. It seems more times than not on the off exchanges, right? It's not right. occurring on the on the normal exchanges. It's occurring in dark pools. It's occurring in block trades. It's occurring uh, occurring in other off uh, off exchanges. But just because we're doing this interview for the benefit of the general public. And in particular, the uh, Wall Street bets uh, uh, ape community. Um, can you tell me uh, uh, a little bit about your background so all the viewers can understand uh, from where you came and where you are now? Well, I won't go too far into into my background. I'm a, I'm a design engineer by formal education, uh, but I started my my Wall Street career in my mid twenties at Lehman Brothers. Um, which was one of the more aggressive firms, ironically, illegally naked short sold out of business. Uh, and, and uh, uh, you know, from, from Lehman Brothers, I, I went on to um, actually own and operate my own small regional broker dealer for a number of years where we raised private equity capital and did late stage venture capital, um, IPOs, um, reg S deals, if you remember those and, 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 uh, you know, along the way, I, you know, I, I put a lot of family and friends into, into a lot of the, the, the deals that we were doing, private placements and whatnot of public companies. And, um, you know, it, it was disheartening, you know, when you put family and friends you, you, and, you, and you have, you know, seemingly you know, small companies with a great business model and, and, and uh, you know, the right jockey, the right horse, so to speak. And, 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 they, and these, these companies turn around and go belly up. You get you get tired of watching that after a while and wondering how the hell it's happened. Well, you know we know now how it's how it's been happening. It's been happening for decades, and, and uh, of course, you know I've, I've spent the latter part of my career now focused on on you know what can be done to help these these uh, in in most cases development stage early stage companies. Although it's happening all the way up the food chain, as you know. Yeah. So when did you first start? Uh, uh, Share Intel. Tell us about Share Intel and its origin state. Well, the, the origin of Share Intel, you know, began back in in, uh, in in the earlier part of, I guess, around 2002, 2003. And the, 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 you know, the original model was simply to help, you know, CEOs, CFOs understand uh, who their shareholders are in, in, in real terms. So, if, if, if you back up and you say to yourself in those days, all right, so, so the Bloombergs of the world and the Thompsons of the world had figured out how to provide data uh, that was predominantly, you know, institutional uh, in nature, um, you know, to those more mature companies, if, 
Now, the, 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 the idea with Jer of Gerontel was if it's, if it's important for mature companies to know who their shareholders are, their institutional shareholders are, uh, it's got to be equally as important for less mature companies who are predominantly held by retail investors to know who their shareholders are. And, you know, um, early on in the development of the software, you know, which was, which was again, designed to do nothing more than to mm -hmm. monitor who's buying, who's selling, who's friend, who's foe, that sort of thing. Uh, we discovered that there were anomalies in, in the data. And my father, who was uh, you've met and know, uh, uh, 91 today, um, sat with me for many of those development years. Uh, you know, we, we would scratch our heads trying to understand why, you know, for example, Broadridge, uh, which, which is the proxy entity for about 90% of all bank broker dealers and clearing firms, would be reporting um, a greater number of shares um, in, 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 in the form of you know, their custodial accounts than the DTC and the transfer agent could account for. And um, you know, little by little, we sort of, we, we, we backed into an area of expertise where you, know, where you and I cross paths that um, you know, focuses on these anomalies, these imbalances, if you will, uh, that, that uh, you know, don't add up. You, 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 can't have, you can't have a greater number of shares being reported in custodial accounts, uh, being reported as beneficial owners, than, than you know, legally authorized, issued, and outstanding, and accounted for at DTC in your transfer agent. Yeah, very true. So, and, and, and you and I both know that I've seen the same thing in my practice. You know, I've, I've now uh, formed an association and have as a client, uh, Naked Truth Inc. I don't know if you've gone to that website, nakedtruth.info, nakedtruth.info, but you ought to check it out because it has a, it has a lot of uh, data on it that supports exactly what you're saying in the form of regulatory actions, in the form of lawsuits that have been filed, in the form of settlements that have been reached in the form of papers that have been written about the various topics. So as you sit here and look at it years later, what have you learned as it relates to who's responsible for the most of this from where you sit at Share Intel? Well, it's interesting. You know, I, I live in the land of the hedge funds right here uh, up in Fairfield County, Connecticut. Um, you know, my office is, is uh, you know, on a street called Wall Street North, you know, and, and I know a lot of these guys, these hedge funds that uh, that are, you know, typically and often referred to as the as the culprits. Um, and and you and I both know that, you know, a lot of these hedge funds aren't innocent per se, but but while the while the Reddit crowd and and, and uh, the Ape crowd are are seem to be hyper focused on, you know, who are these big bad hedge funds, you know, uh, we we typically emphasized you know to our clients to our to the companies that hire us it's it's really not the big, big bad hedge fund out there that, that needs to be you know focused on and are, are they complicit sometimes you know you i'm sure you probably say yes they are you know maybe more often than not but they all they always have you know plausible deniability right um at the end of the day the onus is on the bank broker dealer or a clearing firm to you know under the short sale rules to a locate shares and b Make sure those shares are available to deliver on settlement date. So, uh, our our analysis, our system, our, our our experts, you know, we we track ownership, um, you know, uh, settlement ownership, and that points to the fact that you know a lot of the prime lenders, in particular, the bulge bracket firms, are not necessarily adhering to the short sale rules. Um, you know, the, the the data, as you know, we're you know, we're, we're one in a team of experts that you often deploy to get to the bottom of this chicanery. But from where I sit, uh, in simple terms, um, you know, it's in, in, in based on my, my, my Wall Street, you know, experience and my cynicism, um, you know, you've got you've got a you've got a culture on the street that that prevails today. It's the one I, I, I encountered as a, as a young 20 something year old, which is a very aggressive culture. The, the culture is, you know, book the business, book the business. Guys, get out there. You're the Green Beret. You're the, the elite Lehman Brothers. That's what they used to call us. Your job is to get out there and book the business, run as many yellow lights as you have to all day. You know, um, if you get caught in a red light, you know, then, you know, the firm will pay a fine, whatever. That Your business is to book the business. 
I would argue that that culture prevails today. Uh, I would argue that that's the root of this problem. Um, there is no boogeyman, illegal, naked short seller per se, which uh, which which you know a lot of the uh, world likes to focus on. It's it's you know it's it's a function of of you know, holding accountable those along the way uh, that would be a responsible for the short you know adhering to short sale rules and be responsible for the reporting rules. Two silos there. Uh, there's there, there's the, the short sale rules and there's also the reporting rules. Neither one of which I would argue, and I'm sure you would you would elaborate, are being adhered to in a responsible fa fashion. So are you saying then that, that it's principally the prime brokers that are creating the counterfeit shares? Yeah, I, I would say that um, th that it's the you know the bulge bracket firms, the 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 prime lenders in in most cases, you know those that have the incentive to to make the money. There's huge money being made on the stock loan desk. Is is as everybody you know if you can see, just pick up their financials, look at the quarterlies. You know record profit always being made on the stock loan desk, and you know, so the incentive is there to keep, you know, to keep stock borrow rates low, right? Because you got to keep the short selling game alive. The only way you can keep that game alive is to, is to, you know, um, uh, basically make sure that the supply doesn't tighten up, right? If the supply tightens up, then, then the stock borrow rates increase and the economics of short selling just aren't there. So, so it becomes very convenient, I think, for the, for the, for the for the prime lenders to book the business, as they say, and and worry about how to how to how to you know settle those trades at a later date. Do you believe that prime brokers are uh, purporting to lend more shares than they have? In simple terms, yes. What do you think? Yeah, you look see at the regulatory. Yeah, yeah but, no, I, th I think I think they do. I'm just asking your opinion to see if it's the same as mine. You know, I, I believe for sure they're lending many more shares than what they have. And that yeah, is I mean, what, the problem. One of the biggest problems is being able to mark that share so it doesn't get relent again, because the reality is, as you know, David, the, the, the stock loan desk will get a call from 10 different people. Uh, in many instances, they'll give all 10 of them locates. And in some cases, they only have one share to loan. So it's almost like securitizing the loan, the stock loan. It's almost like the, the ounce of gold that's uh, got uh, responsible for, you know, a uh, thousand ounces of derivatives. Okay. So, I mean, you know, it's, 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 it's leveraging, it's making money off of something that frankly doesn't exist, or if it exists, it exists only in a minuscule form of what you're doing. Um, so to me, yes, yeah, stock lending is a huge, you know, billions of dollars, not millions, billions of dollars by the time you add it up. And then uh, the same thing for, you know, shares that they sell and don't deliver, in my mind. Um, so do you believe that there is a sea change, you know, going on now when we look at, when we look at the Naked Truth uh, uh, site, when we look at the GameStop issue, the AMC issue, the, the apes that are behind that purportedly 4 million apes behind the AMC movement uh, in, in total across the world, many multiples of that uh, in, in investors, they're called apes, but investors that are tired of uh, Wall Street abusing, you know, the, the general public uh, and the investing public. So do you believe there's a there's a sea change that's that's starting relative to exposing this and at some level trying to stop one or all of it. It sure feels like it, right? It feels like there's a groundswell. It feels like, you know, obviously there's an awareness level uh, that has never been, you know, um, this, this significant uh, for, for many, many years. I mean, you know, for, for years and years, the biggest challenge that, that we had was convincing you know the C-suite, the board of directors, that this is happening. You know uh, that that it's it's worth looking into. That they have a fiduciary obligation to look into. And, and of course, you know the GameStop and uh, and AMC, you know, um, um, the cases have have sort of brought brought all this to light. So I, I think you know the the question now becomes not so much to to the average CEO CFO, uh, you know. Is, is it plausible? Yeah, it's plausible. You're, you're damn right. It's plausible. 
Is it happening? Yeah, it's happening. Is it happening to you? Well, you can find out if you get on our system. All right. If you, if you get on our software system, subscribe to Share Intel Services, we're going to tell you if, it, if it's happening. But more importantly, um, we're going to help you identify the participants through this chicanery. And, you know, again, that's where you and I cross paths. You know, we have a team of experts that can, that can uh, you know, talk about, talk about action steps, you know, and, 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 and really, you know, the, the, uh, the reality of the matter is you know, we, we're, we're busier than ever. More and more companies are, 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 are finding our services now. Uh, and, and I think the sea change that you're maybe talking about hopefully is in the form of, uh, of an awareness, you know, again, at that C-suite level that, that there's, you know, there is a problem and, and there's a fiduciary obligation to address. It. And I think you can speak to that perhaps maybe uh, better than I can. Um, well, the, the simple version is a board of directors, once they know uh, or, or, or should have known about an existing fraud, has a duty to do everything they can to protect their shareholders against that fraud. And they owe that duty to the company uh, and, and, and uh, they need to uphold it. That's simple. And you and I both know in many instances that doesn't happen because in some instances, in some instances, the very firm that is doing this is the very firm that they're getting their money from in the form of debentures or, or investor investments or a shelf offering or whatever, whatever they're doing. Nobody um, wants to bite so, the hand that feeds them. Well, nobody wants to bite the hand that feeds them, and Wall Street is a powerful tool. I mean, That's let's right. face it. How many times has Goldman Sachs been involved in helping run the Fed? <laughs> I mean, that's all you need to know to understand how powerful they are, right? So, so once a shareholder sees something in the market that, that demonstrates that, that, that this is going on at some level, that is, that there's more shares being sold out there than really exist, or, or something materially in excess of what it used to do, what should they do? What action should they take? Well, uh, in simple terms, they got to gather the evidence. Okay. That's, I, I tell CEOs, CFOs, you know, board of directors every day, guys, um, you know, you have to turn on a security camera where none exists. And more important, you have to hit the record button. And that's essentially what we've created. We've created a security camera. Um, we, we help these companies uh, get their arms around this topic and help them, you know, help them understand if, Again, yeah, A, if, is this happening? We're going we're gonna to tell you. Uh, but, you know, who's doing it? More importantly, we're going to tell you, okay? What you do with yep. that data and that knowledge, you know, uh, once you, when, you know, we created a hot potato at that moment, you know, and, 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 it's, and it's one that, you know, is not necessarily a, I mean, it might be red hot, like to your point. I mean, we, we, we may uncover some, you know, some the, the, the markers of some chicanery that may be happening, you know, being created right within the very investment bank that these guys depend on for their next capital raise. So, how do we how, how do we help them navigate that that uh, predicament? You know, those waters. You know, it's it's uh, the, the sticky topic. Should should, should should those shareholders write the board and ask them to hire you to do this type of investigation? Absolutely, all day long. If, if, if you are an owner of one share of stock, I would argue that you have the right to know who all the other shareholders are. True. And so how do they, how do they reach you? How do they get to your website? How do they start this process? How do they, what's the best way for them to introduce the board to you? Uh, or what can they show the board that you've done or these type of things other than of course, me giving you an A plus for all the great work you've done for us for in excess of 10 or 11, 12 years on all the clients we've sent your way, uh, things that you've helped us root out, which are pretty clear cut. Um, you know, step by step, take me through what a shareholder needs to do once they discover this. Well, I, I, I think I think a shareholder and or a band of shareholders, you know, however, however influential they, you know, they need to be, uh, uh, you know, a large shareholder will always get, a uh, very large shareholder will always get the, the C-suite's attention. Um, you know, all companies rely on and depend on, you know, what I would call their key anchor investors. You know, those investors that are always there long-term, 
you know, help mop up the float, help help maintain orderly markets, and, and, and help them, you know, manage their market cap um, effectively. So, yeah, so I think I think you know, shareholders need to need to be aware of who we are, how we can help. Uh, Shareintel.com is, is is the website, just like it sounds. S H A R E I N T E L. Shareintel.com. Um, you know, um, I, I'm always available to get on the phone with uh, with the CEO, CFO, uh, board of directors uh, to explain, you know, how how we do what we do. A lot of what we do is proprietary. We've got two patents in place, so I'm not of the mindset to you know put our methodology out there on the uh, on on the internet. Um, you know, we've we, we've developed our, our proprietary technology over 15 years, and we we want to protect that. You know, and the, the, the experts that walk our hallways um, in conjunction with the software we've created is uh, a powerful tool, as you know. So I would just encourage, um, you know, as, as this groundswell and the sea change, um, you know, uh, comes about, uh, you know, that, that, that we're part of the, part of the uh, uh, solution here, okay? We're, we're, we're a real part of the solution. So how does how does your software work and what in general can it tell you? In, in general terms, we're going to be able to tell uh, a company if, in fact, the markers of illegal naked short selling present themselves in our analysis. And more importantly, um, who the participants are at the bank, broker, dealer and clearing firm level to to those um, uh, markers of illegal naked short selling. Simple terms. Right. And so um, once you get that information, which, well, let me let me start over. Isn't it true that, that you have to have the company's cooperation in order to get that information? This information absolutely is private in nature. It belongs to the company only. It is not out there for anybody to, to get their hands on. Uh, we have to be appointed a third party authorized agent on behalf of the company to access data which is private in nature it belongs only to the company much of this data uh, can be obtained uh, when the company signs our services historically but but much of it cannot be it's on a going going forward basis i think wall street has engineered this structure for obvious reasons uh, so in other words if you don't have a, a, it, this security camera turned on and and, and the report and the record button turned on you can't go if you didn't capture if you didn't capture the data didn't have the the, the, the recorder on um, it doesn't exist so that that's that's the real value proposition we're, we're going to help a company you know turn on a security camera and and collect the evidence and then what to do with that evidence as you know is a very delicate topic which really means doesn't it David that in order to make this happen. The shareholders have to put enough pressure on the board to hire you to get those services done, right? That's right. Um, but you know, it, it, you know, there's a lot of hypotheticals here, Wes, that you and I could, you know, we could go down a number of rat holes talking about what what is truly in the shareholders' best interest. And you know, I, I think you know it's fair to say. Tell me if I'm wrong, but in in, in many of the cases, or maybe most of the cases, uh, I think I think most of your cases have settled. You know why? Because it was in the shareholders' best interest, likely at some point, to settle. Um, so it, you know, you know, can we can we collect the evidence? Yes, we can. Can we help determine who who the culprits are? Yes, we can. Um, at, at the end of the day, you know how how we solve this or how we put out these fires, make this problem go away for companies on an individual basis. Um, you know, there, there are different recipes, different, different cost-effective strategies. And of course, you know, you're always in the mix of all of, all of, uh, that, that type of consulting, um, um, you know, the consulting, you know, service. Yeah. And so once you get the information report to the company, what is typically the next step? Next step might be to, you know, depending on the size of the company and the scope and in and, and, and the severity of what we see in our analysis, might be to, might be to uh, uh, alert the compliance officers at some of the banks, broker dealers, and clearing firms that 
that as a matter of fiduciary best practices, you know, we're monitoring uh, the supply side of the, the equation here. We're, 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 we want to understand on any given day of the year, not just, not just one day of the year for proxy purposes, but on any given day of the year, any random given day of the year, who our shareholders are, you know, and, 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 uh, and if there are, it appears to be a greater number of shareholders than, than there are shares, then, you know, then there are, you know, various strategies that you can deploy that we suggest be deployed depending on, on, on uh, either companies, companies needs, uh, companies goals and companies budgets, quite frankly. So in general terms, what's the range of your services? What, 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 what does it typically cost? And I understand everything's negotiable, but ballpark, uh, as I understand it, it's not a major expenditure really to get, uh, to get this service uh, looked at per se. Well, don't you do it by the year? Well, we, we, I mean, we, we, we have a phase one and a phase two. A phase one is a 60 day, 60 day proposition. Almost, almost all companies can afford phase one. And that's to, that's to determine A, if this is happening and who the participants are. That's generally, you know, under $30,000 uh, uh, to, to, to do a phase one analysis, 60 day analysis. Uh, phase two is, you know, is, the, is the balance of the, of the year. Most companies don't go into phase one. Uh, thinking that they're not going to go to phase two. So you think if you want to think of it all in, uh, the, the annual services uh, tend to be around fifty thousand uh, dollars a year, which is you know small potatoes to pay for what 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 we can help deliver. Well, especially if you if you assume that there's millions of shares that's being stolen from the company's treasury, right? I mean, separate and apart from the decrease in the stock price, right? I mean, it's. It's a it's a big number that's being stolen essentially out of the company's coffer, which in turn dilutes shareholders, right? Because the more shares that are issued, the le the less of that company that you own, and, and of course a part of it's counterfeit, right? That's right. Yeah, counterfeit phantom, however you want so, to catch it. Exactly. So, what has been your history of of uh, uh, companies attempting to to contact the regulators? Is that been that successful or not? Well, I, you know, all too often, I think that backfires. Uh, you know, the, the regular, I'm pretty cynical about this topic, as you know. Um, I, you know, I, I, I visited the SEC a few years ago, and, and I walked away kind of frustrated. Uh, I will tell you that the SEC uh, signed a five-year NDA with Share Intel, and that probably doesn't happen every day, as I've been told uh, by former SEC chairman. Uh, I, I think that, you know, I naively went down to the SEC thinking that, you know, we've, we've got, uh, we've got the, the solution here, the software solution, a macro solution to this problem. Uh, but, you know, what, what, what we really do is address this on a, on a micro level. But, you know, go, getting the regulators involved it hasn't, hasn't been productive, you know, from, from our perspective, uh, for whatever reason. And, you know, I, I'd let you maybe elaborate on, on, on what you think the reasons might be. I mean, you know, cynically, people like Patrick Byrne and others will, would say that the, the SEC is deeply captured. You know, others might argue that the, you know, the regulators, um, uh, you know, we're, 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 they're in a, they're yeah, in a, I know, I know a lot, I know, well, yeah, I know a lot of, a lot of people that think they're captured, but, you know, I, I would also argue that it, it, it could also be because they're outstaffed, they're outmanned or woman, however you want to say it. Uh, I would also tell you that this is such a complex subject that you really have to be dedicated to pursue it because it's so friggin' complicated. Right. right. And, and you know this because your your software, you know, took a while for you to design it. In fact, your software's patented, isn't it? That's right. Two patents. And we were hoping the so SEC would buy it. Patents. Yeah, we 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 we. I was down there in Washington, thinking that the SEC would would embrace this and and need or want to buy this to deploy it on a macro as a macro you know solution to the problem as part of the solution and and, and uh, you know walked away disappointed Not, you know it's just yeah, I it's, hear you yeah you know, yeah so it's frustrating so stock, if somebody says they have a stock loan but but ultimately they don't really get delivery of that stock loan that creates an artificial share also doesn't it because that stock loan facilitated the sale of a share but in fact, the the seller had no shares to deliver because the borrower wasn't a good one, right? 
Right. No, that's right. Um, you know how this is done. You see it as you peel back the layers in, in the courtroom. Uh, you know, you've, you've, you've uncovered all kinds of, of, of uh, avenues and how they, how they, uh, how, how they create this mess and, cl- and, and keep it alive. And, and, and uh, you know, it's, it's in counting terms, it would be referred to as hiding. Uh, you know, they, 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 they find ways to, to, to keep this game alive and, and it's beyond complicated as, as you point out. And, and I'm not sure that the, that, you know, the, that the, uh, that the regulators, even if, even if they could, they could uh, devote their energies to solving this problem at the end of the day would, would still know how to, or, or want to know how to solve it because uh, it's, it's, it's a big problem. It's a big problem. And I'm not sure that, that, uh, you know, it wouldn't undermine our financial markets altogether if, if 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 the if the layers were peeled back and everybody were to understand just how big the problem this is, yeah. If you talk about that, just to throw some numbers around, some of our consulting experts think it's north of a hundred trillion dollars in the states, and then worldwide it's over two hundred and fifty trillion dollars of financial assets that have been sold but not delivered. And that counts stock, bonds, everything. Because it seems like it's not only systemic in the stock market, it's also systemic in other financial assets uh, where, you know, they only have to transfer it electronically. That, that seems to be one of the main reasons for this fraud is they eliminated the physical certificates, whether it's, you know, promissory notes, whether it's stock, whether it's bonds, they, they eliminated that having to be delivered physically and went with this electronic stuff. So from where I said, you know that that's one of the core problems is is allowing the electronic uh, transmission of these assets for efficiency purposes but it absolutely makes it right for corruption what are your thoughts on that uh those numbers are staggering um, I, you know we're 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 focused on the equity markets and and uh you know we've had hundreds of companies on the system over time so this is you know this, this is a problem that I, I will just say that, you know, it impacts $30 million companies, it impacts $300 million companies, and it impacts $30 billion companies. And we've had all, you know, they've gone right up the food chain. And, you know, this is, this is systemic. Uh, it, it, it's, it's, it's something that has to be addressed. I'm delighted that there's a groundswell. It is a complex topic. There is nothing simple about, about, um, understanding what's what's you know behind you know all this and it cannot i can't you know it can't oversimplify this uh but but i i think it is important you know uh, you know obviously it sounds a little self-serving but but i think it's important for companies to stop guessing if this is happening um and understand that you know there is something that they can they can do about this and it starts with gathering the evidence and i think if there's enough enough evidence gathered with enough companies, um, and of course, we're sitting on a lot of that right now, as you know, then, you know, that that can only, you know, add or feed the movement, if you will. Yeah, what, what is the largest imbalance? And when you say imbalance, I'm talking about that. Imbalances really represent counterfeit shares, right, in your world? That's right. When you say imbalances. Yeah. Yeah. So what's the largest imbalance you ever had on one day where the number of shares reported by Broadridge uh, uh, was was substantially more, I'm sorry, the number of shares reported by the brokers to Broadridge was substantially more than those brokers had at the DTC. Well, we've seen we've seen uh, well over 100 percent over and above issued an outstanding a double, um, and 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 uh, wow. you know that's always you know the, the number itself is always relative to issued an outstanding, but. But uh, yeah, we've seen we've seen you know over and above reported short interest. I mean, if, if you want to argue for a minute, if you want to say that, you know been a reported short interest is an absolute, which I would argue is not. You know, I, I you know Wall Street is one giant SRO, as you know, self-regulating organization. Right. So that I'm, I'm even cynical about the number that's, that's reported to Finra, Finra uh, every 15 days. But we've we've seen you know numbers uh, double and you know triple the reported uh, FINRA short interest. So 
Um, yeah, and, 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 and as you know, and as, as I know, uh, one of the main reasons that you, the reported short interest doesn't really represent the real short interest is because the brokers, uh, in an attempt to circumvent Reg SHO, mark their trading tickets long. In, 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 in a trading ticket, it says short, long, exempt. So if you mark it long, it doesn't go into your reported short interest, right? There you have it. And if they're borrowing shares from cash accounts, which, you know, which, which is another trick that you have uncovered. I'm not, I'm not making accusations here. You, you've uncovered this. Uh, we have together uncovered yeah. this. So, um, yeah, no question. So, so in, in addition to the uh, uh, reporting short interest not being accurate, uh, uh, the, the imbalances that you see doesn't even include, does it, the uh, what's called X clearing shares? That's right. That's 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 why it's it's exciting to think that you know this our current SEC chairman uh, may take the initiative to to force all of this into the light of day. The, the light of day, the best light of day we have, you know, is the exchanges. You know, and, and I'd argue there's still a lot of work to be done there, but that would be that would be a meaningful uh, uh, occurrence, and and it would enable us to see a lot more of what's actually going on. Because the, the, what, what we see is just the tip of the iceberg. Well, it is, because when you think about it, if you go to the DTC website, you're going to see that uh, they have a subsidiary called Obligation Warehouse. An Obligation Warehouse is where all the fails go. <laughs> and at least it's my belief, more importantly, our consulting experts believe that, that what's housed in Obligation Warehouse are the X clearing fails. And I have to tell you, based on the information I've seen, it's a very large number. So, so in my understanding about X clearing is it's broker to broker. It doesn't go through the DTC. It, it would be kind of like we had a private sale. You know, Merrill sell, sells to Goldman or Goldman sells to UBS or UBS sells to Credit Suisse or Morgan, these type of things. Um, what do you think about spoofing? Have you... Have you studied the recent trend about spoofing? Well, you know, that's just another part of this chicanery. You know, it's it's uh, it's it's all about gaming the system, right? It's all about it's all about putting the control in the hands of the of the house, if you will, to ensure that the house doesn't lose money. Um, so, um, you know, it, 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 this kind of stuff has gone on forever. I mean, it's just it's for as long as I've been around, this this kind of stuff has been going on. Uh, you know, I'm happy to see that it's come to light. I'm happy that we're out there making a difference. You're out there making a difference. You know, hopefully, you know, collectively, you know, the, the, the those that are that are working to develop, you know, uh, software, and, and uh, I think you're referring to David Lauer and some others. Uh, um, you know, we we all offer a different piece of the uh, of the solution here. To you know, if we we all if we all band together, you know, maybe maybe the SEC could have could adopt what we've created and, and, and put us all to work for uh, for the common good of, of, of all of the shareholders out there, hardworking, hardworking uh, shareholders and help them protect their, their, their hard-earned money. Absolutely, David. We know nothing's more important than a, than a transparent market, a market that gives everybody the same information, the same level playing field, as opposed to what, what I'm seeing and have seen for 20 years, at least in part, is a rigged market. If I have the ability to artificially generate a supply of shares, I absolutely can force the price of that stock to go down every day. Because if supply exceeds demand, it's gonna go down, right? That's right, yeah. And in simple terms, what, you know, what we're doing is we're, we're helping companies understand and tighten up the, the you know, supply. You know, no amount of good news. I tell CEOs every day, no amount of good news, hard work and, and execution and outstrip an artificial and endless supply of stock. So, you know, if 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 the regulators aren't, you know, addressing the supply issues, uh, then who will? Well, I mean, it's us. That's that's who will. I mean, that, that that's what we do. We, you know, they're companies have all kinds of budgets for IR, traditional, you know, investor relations, PR, shareholder outreach, 
you know, to, to create investor awareness and attract long-term investors. That's the lifeblood of any company, attracting long-term investors. But nobody's out there addressing the supply side of the equation. That's what we do. And, 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 right. and I would argue it's the most critical thing right now because, you know, it, 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 we're, we're, it's kind of like we're living in the Wild West. <laughs> it, is, it is the Wild West, but just for a few, right? That's right. Well, David, I want to thank you. I want to thank you for all your years of work in this space, all your courage, you know, all your chutzpah, all of everything that you bring to the table. Truly, I can tell you that that in my view, your ability to identify those imbalances, as you call them, which I call them counterfeit shares, and further tell us which brokerage firm has issued them but doesn't have them is, is pretty powerful information. So I hope this goes out to all the apes. I hope this could, will get posted on the uh, Naked Truth website. And everybody, again, I remind you, needs to go to nakedtruth.org. Uh, I'm sorry, nakedtruth.info, nakedtruth.info. And there you're going to find an enormous amount of information. We're posting more every day. I say we, the, 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 the board of directors, I'm, I have no involvement in that company other than they're a client of mine, but we're going to try to potentially do some investigations and uh, uh, see if we can help the ape community in general just root out stock manipulation, which is really what, what it's all about. And I think our timing's great, especially with the new EU development. And I think that's just going to be the tip of the iceberg. I think you're going to see a lot of um, a lot of countries make a material change. I spent today talking to a regulator in another country. Uh, who, who sought me out to to comment on on you know what's going on? So I volunteered my time to that just because it was the right thing to do. But I think this is a movement. So uh, continue the movement, and for all those interested, uh, you know, go to Share Intel. And your website address is what, David? Again, ShareIntel.com. ShareIntel.com. This is David Winger, the head cheese at that entity, and David. Uh, I'm signing off. Uh, appreciate your time and the interview today and look forward to seeing you soon. Always a pleasure, Wes. Look forward to seeing you soon. All right. Bye-bye.